the fan zone, of course. It is the touchline. In the next few minutes, the show will be getting done. But Manchester City and Arsenal is still on 2 nil in favor of the City, who are the hosts. And, of course, my panelists in studio telling me that it's going to be a marauding outcome in favor of City. But, of course, anything can happen. You never know. Arsenal might come, might make a, what we call, you know, uh, to overturn the current result. Anyway, Wanjala Shundu is joining us. Is a Chelsea supporter. Good to see you, man. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Why do you support I, Chelsea? I support <laughs> Chelsea. That is not a question I can just answer directly. It is something internal. I have been fan of Chelsea since I was in high school, so I believe in Chelsea. You signed Romelu Lukaku. Do you think Romelu Lukaku would be the current version of what Didier Drogba used to absolutely, be? Absolutely, absolutely. Ken, Chelsea up against Liverpool this particular afternoon, this particular evening. It's a yeah. late kickoff. Yeah. How do you see that fixture? I think uh, I've seen many people are, are looking forward to the battle between uh, Van Dijk and Lukaku. Oh. Yeah, you know, it's Van Dijk is back. Last, last week he looked great in defense and now he's facing a really, really big challenge against Lukaku who knows how to keep defenders off the ball. We saw him destroying the Arsenal defense last week. And that's the, that's the thing people are... But I, I think Liverpool might pick Chelsea to, today. I, I see Liverpool winning. I know you disagree. <laughs> I disagree with him. Though I know Liverpool at home, that is an advantage for them. But according to the pattern and the way we have a new coach who has been trying to bring another system in our playing time and the way we normally play, I see we are going to deliver what maybe Liverpool they not expect. I, I think my friend here, you remember last time when we had uh, a match with the Liverpool, they lost. They were at home because took care. You see the man who knows how to read the game, he knows how to... You see position players in their own preferred positions. So I believe as a Chelsea fan and what our current coach is doing, I'm sure we are going to get three points at Anfield. According to you, do you think Thomas Tuchel was the best thing you guys were missing? Because after taking over from Frank Lampard, yes. who was... Uh, shooting blanks, having inconsistent results at the Stamford Bridge, mm -hmm. despite having uh, assembled a good squad. Yes. Tuchel came through and he won Champions League for you, and even he performed very well in Premier League, mm -hmm. ensuring that he finishes in among the top four. Is that something you are lacking? Yeah, we were lacking coach, and also we have been lacking a little striker, whom I believe we have him. This is Lukaku, so we have nothing to fear, because Last season, Lukaku was not there, but we managed to get three points at Anfield. I assure you that this time round, we are looking at number of goals. I believe we're going to get two or three. So I'm pretty sure that as Chelsea fan, today is the day. How is Lukaku's influence since arrival at Stamford? He's already scored the mm -hmm. first goal last weekend yeah, yeah, yeah. for the team. You, you know, like Lukaku right now at Chelsea, everyone everyone is excited to have him because uh, you look at how clinical he is and you compare him to Vanna last season, it's a, it's a huge upgrade for Chelsea fans because Lukaku is a serious striker. You know, he gets goals, he's good in the air, he can shoot from afar. It's what Chelsea really needed to really, this season, to really challenge City. And I think uh, Chelsea and United are going to push City because of the signings they have made. And uh, Chelsea... Uh, I don't really see any weakness how Tuchel puts them out because, as he said, he knows how to play the players. He's, he's tactical. He's tactically very, very vast in the in the game. Uh, but still, again, you know, Klopp playing at home. Liverpool just had, has some kind of, you know, now Anfield will be packed as compared to last season where it was a, it was an empty ground. And when Anfield is packed, we've seen Barcelona going <laughs> down there. We've seen say, Dortmund years back getting turned. So <laughs> you never know what's going to happen there. Yeah. Plenty of options in terms of attacking department. Do you think they will work in your favor? Because now you have Pulisic, you have Vanna, you have Didier. Uh, we have ZH. You have ZH, you have yes. Romelu Lukaku, yes. who just arrived recently. Plenty of alternatives. Will they work in your favor? Yeah, they will work in our favor, and I also want to correct my friend here, is that uh, as Chelsea, we believe, we were in Arsenal, Emirates Stadium, and it was packed with a lot of fans. But later, or what happened there is that we got three points. So I believe, Anfield, there is no change because fans are fans. No matter the way they sing, no matter the way they cheer, I believe we believe in ourselves as players, I mean as fans, because as fans we believe, players also believe the same. 
And this is something we have been carrying on, especially how we, we, we won Champions League. We believe that we're going to make it this time round in the local league, I mean, of Premier League. How terrified are you with the uh, comeback of uh, Virgil van Dijk, who has been missing in action due to injury? The Dutchman now returned in action. You remember he missed Euro saying that yes. he wants to recover fully so that he can make a stylish comeback, mm -hmm. of which he's back today and we will see him playing alongside uh, Matip. Matip. Matip, which yes. is not a good combination though, but how terrified are you in terms of your striking department getting worried of this huge defender in him? We are not terrified as Chelsea. What I believe is that though Van Dijk is a very good defender, I can say he's the best defender in the world, but um, Romero Lukaku and the pattern we are playing, especially our front guys, I'm talking of striking force, they are very little, they are very sharp, they are very fast, and that is what we are looking at as Chelsea. And I believe, you see, when it comes to Van Dijk, he's physically fit. That one, it can also, we can push Lukaku there just to, to like, take advantage of him and make sure that he keeps him all the time. But we have guys like Polisic, Ziek, we have Mount, we have Harvards, we have Vana, maybe if he's going to come in. We believe that we're going to take advantage because he's not fast as Vana, he's not fast as Polisic and their movement. So we are going to benefit a lot from these guys, not only Lukaku, but the front line of Chelsea. We believe. Liverpool this season, they don't appear as threatening as... Yes. <laughs> they have been yes, in the season. previous seasons. We've seen even their coach, Jürgen Klopp. I think this is his last season mm. in charge because he, he has hinted of departure yeah. after the conclusion of this particular season. But Diego Jota, the Portuguese youngster, mm. is now leading their front line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he started ahead of Firmino. Yes, yeah, he mm. started the season well. You know, he knows how to get to get goals. And uh, the difference between him and Firmino is Firmino used to drop deeper to help create at times. Jota, sometimes the ball just find him in the box in the right position. You look at the header he scored against Burnley in between two Burnley centre backs, Benmi and Tarkovsky, which is usually a hard thing. He just popped up there, he got the goal. And also about Liverpool being threatening, I think uh, the, how they performed last season really made people doubt them. Because you look at that same team a season back, with the, last season they also didn't have Van Dijk, but when they had, when they were winning the Premier League, they were threatening. They were a scary team, and uh, they can find that fire, you know, get that fire back to really because they still have the same players. It's just Vinalda who's left, but they can still fill him in, you know, Milner, Henderson. They're still there. They're still the same squad. It's just that last season's performances made people. Mm, I'm not really sure about this Liverpool team. Yeah. And is Jurgen Klopp playing mind games over? You know the signings. He has said that teams that have got financial muscles can sign uh, players as they wish to. Uh, referring to what has happened at Manchester City with mm -hmm. bringing in of Jack Grealish and their links with ja with Harry Kane, which failed to uh, materialize, mm -hmm. and also United now bringing back Ronaldo. Is Klopp playing mind games over, you know, him saying that he's satisfied with the squad he has? Uh, I cannot say that he's playing mind games, but to me, I think Klopp... Uh, He's the one who decided that him, as a coach, he better and he prefers the squad. To me, what I understand, I don't think if he has uh, gone and chose some players that he feels they're going to change the system at Liverpool. He's very okay and he's very satisfied with the players he has. So he wants to nurture or grow such uh, talent so that they have that compact. Whereby if they work or they play, they play together for long. It's not just looking at short-term solution, but it's looking for a long term whereby they're going to be up there and try to race or compete for the title. I'm talking of Premier League. At some points, Pandit referring to attacking trio of Liverpool, of Mane, Salah and Fabinho as the most prolific one globally. Is it still the case? Ah, it can't be the case. <laughs> Right now, this season, it can't be the case because you look at the front lines of United right now, Chelsea and City as always. And even if you leave England and you go to the Champions League where Liverpool also, there's still some. There's the PSG front line, obviously. Everyone, there's the Bayern front line. They can't be the most prolific because even the Firmino is out of that right now, you know. Mm -hmm. Jota has sort of taken his place because of his goal return. So 
They were prolific a few years back, but I don't think uh, they are going to repeat the feat this season. Mm. Wow. Of course, a lot of matches lined up this particular afternoon. City up against Arsenal, still 2 nil in favour of the home team City playing host to Arsenal. And it looks like Arsenal have one of their players who've gotten red carded, of course, Granite Shaka has been red carded on the 36 minute. Wow. And this, I think, will work to their disadvantage. Yeah. Can we expect a landslide score here? <laughs> yeah, to me, I expect that. Because City, with the pattern and the way they play, I believe they're going to take advantage of this because this is a man down now. And Shaka, not just like any other player, is a very important player. And the position he plays in uh, Arsenal team is the man that missing something now very important in their squad. So Man City is going to take advantage of it and it's going to hit Arsenal as it is. Ken, we thought that after the departure of Sergio Cunha Aguero, Manchester City will be harmless, especially up front. Mm, yeah, many people thought that. But you know the thing with Pep is also last season he played some games without a striker, you know. So for him to play without a striker is just a matter of a tactical switch which he just pushes. Because we saw him in the Champions League years back, mm. he had Bernardo Silva as a false nine, he's played De Bruyne as a false nine, uh, Mares has played as a false nine, I think, in the Champions League against PSG. So. Even with or without a striker, I think how they create the goals, how they are always moving the ball, that's the, that's the main factor as to how City get their goals. The quick movement of, bo of balls and the quick movement of players. Gentlemen, as we wind up, of course, in other European leagues, uh, Bundesliga, uh, Serie A, and even La Liga, pundits are still giving, tipping the usual favourites, Bayern Munich in Bundesliga. In La Liga, it's Debatable, yes. <laughs> because you can't say authoritatively that it's for Real or Barcelona to lose because Atletico Madrid is still there in uh, French League One, of course, Paris and Germain. Can we say it's theirs to lose? It is because they have the biggest. They have a bigger squad, a bigger budget than most, of, like even five or six clubs combined in France. It's always theirs to lose, and they lost it last season. I hope they lose it again, though. <laughs> <laughs> Serie A after Ronaldo's departure from Juventus. Mm -hmm and even Lukaku from Inter Milan, mm -hmm. are those two sides now uh, looking lean in terms of score depth? Yeah, I think so. And also, to me, when it comes to Serie A, I think their title now is open. Because yeah. we have teams like Roma also coming up, we have AC Milan. Now it is open. You see, like Juventus people, they usually fear that Ronaldo is there, is making everything work in their favour. This time round, and also Lukaku, when you look at uh, at Inter Milan, everybody was saying Lukaku is their strike force. Now they're going to push much. I think the title there in Serie A is open to any team at the moment. And I think this is the time for the Lion himself, Zlatan Ibrahimovic, mm -hmm. to capitalize on the departure of the duo <laughs> to uh, shine and sparkle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that Milan can do that, but I, I will be looking, you know, Atalanta, the past two seasons have been really amazing and mm -hmm. you know with the big guys leaving, they can sneak up because they've done it. They've been beating the big teams, they've been in the Champions League. Mm -hmm. That's a team to look at in Serie A, Atalanta. Definitely. Of course, it's been the fans on fan favorite segment of the touchline. Coming towards the end of the show, Wanjala Shundu of course joined us late and Ken Andrew, our panelist this particular afternoon and we're looking forward to what will happen this evening. Chelsea up against Liverpool in a pulsating clash of the day. Of course, Man United will be in action tomorrow and right now as we speak, currently City are playing host to Arsenal and so far, two goals in favour of the home team. Of course, it's been an honour doing this. Let's meet next Saturday, same time, same place. God bless and always keep safe. <laughs>